What is VS Code and why would you want to use it to edit Blender Python scripts and add-ons? VS Code is similar to Blender's text editor but has a lot more functionality. It's basically a text editor on steroids. You'll write code faster with guidance, there's better code highlighting, you'll easily work on projects that span multiple files, VS Code can point out where you made mistakes, there's powerful editing features like editing multiple lines at once, there's hundreds of useful extensions that will allow you to be more productive when writing code. Even the developers behind Blender use VS Code. And the best feature of all, it's free. So there is no reason for you not to leverage this tool to make your life easier when it comes to writing Python scripts for Blender. Hey, I'm Victor Stepanoff, and I'll be helping you set up Visual Studio Code to edit Blender Python scripts. We'll go over five steps to make this happen. This video is for Mac OS users. If you're not a Mac OS user, I have a separate video for Windows users and Linux users. And before we start, I actually didn't tell you about one more feature that in my opinion is a total game changer for anyone who hasn't used a tool like VS Code before. So make sure to stick around until the end. For the very first step, we'll need to install a standalone version of the Python interpreter. MacOS does come with its own built-in Python 3 and Python 2 interpreters, but they're usually older than what Blender is using. And we need to install a Python version that's equal or greater than what Blender has. Let's search for Python download and open the official python.org website. As of this recording, the latest Python version is 3.11, but there are also other Python versions. Which one do we choose? We can probably use the latest version of Python, but let's see what Blender is using. Let's open the scripting workspace in Blender, and then look into the interactive Python console, and we can see that Blender is using 3.10. We can download any version that's higher than that, and it will work for us. Let's do that. I'll select the Python version 3.10.11, scroll all the way down, and start downloading the macOS 64-bit Universal 2 installer. After the download's complete, we'll need to provide full disk access to the installer app so it could correctly install Python. To do this, I'll need to navigate to the location of the installer app on my disk. I'll open a new window in Finder, go to Computer, Macintosh HD, System, Library, Core Services, and then search for the installer app. Now that I've found the app, I'll open a new spotlight search and search for privacy and security. Click on full disk access and drag and drop the installer app into the list. Make sure to revoke these rights after the installer is done. Now we are ready to run the installer. Install Python as any other app. Now that the installer is done, let's make sure that everything works. Let's open a new spotlight search and search for terminal. In the new terminal window, type in Python 3 and this should open a REPL similar to the one that you'll see in the scripting workspace of Blender, but this is outside of Blender. The version at the top should match the one that we just installed. Let's write some code to generate random numbers to make sure that everything works. I'll import random and then use the randint function to generate random numbers between 0 and 100, and I'll repeat that a number of times. I press the up arrow and enter to repeat the commands, and to exit out of the REPL, press Ctrl D. Now it's time to download Visual Studio Code. Type in VS Code Download in your browser, open the VS Code Download page, and click on the Mac OS installer. After the download is complete, just move the VS Code app from the Downloads folder into the Application folder, and you're all set. Go ahead and launch VS Code. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we have VS Code set up, let's create a new folder and open it. I can do this right from VS Code. I'll create a new tutorials folder in my home folder. Now let's make sure that VS Code can work with Python. Let's open the extension sidebar and search for Python. Go ahead and install the Python extension that's made by Microsoft. After the installation is complete, let's create a new Python file and call it myscript1.py. And let's create another file. In the sidebar, you'll be able to see all the files that are in your project folder. And at the top, you can switch between the tabs of the already open files, just like a browser. Let's write the same random number generation in one of the files. Let's open the run and debug sidebar and then hit the, the run and debug button. Select the first option, debug the current active Python file. And this should open a terminal at the bottom of VS Code. The script just runs and doesn't print anything. Let's fix that and add a print statement. I'll create a new variable and print that out. Let's run the script one more time. Now let's create another script that will print out the home folder of your Mac. I'll import pathlib and get the home folder, assign that to a new variable and print that out. And let's execute our script and you should see your home folder printed out in the terminal below. And with this setup, you can start automating anything you want outside of Blender. Now we need to teach VS Code what is in the BPY module, so it can help us and give us hints as we write our scripts. One way to do this is install the fake BPY module. I've opened the GitHub repository for fake BPY and I'll provide a link in the description to this web page. To install it, I'm going to use the pip installation method that just requires us to run this command. I'll use the terminal in VS Code. I'll enter python3 minus m for module and then paste in the command and hit enter to run it. This will install the module and after that's done, I'll restart VS Code. I'll open Finder, go into the Applications folder, and start VS Code. Now let's create a simple Blender Python script that creates a cube and moves it about the z-axis. Notice as I type, VS Code is giving me suggestions of what to write next. I can hit Tab on my keyboard to let it finish typing for me. Notice that I'm not typing exactly the command. VS Code is able to figure out what I want based on a number of letters from the command. I'll set the size of the cube to 4. I'll create a new variable to reference the cube that we'll create. And then use this variable to update the location on the z-axis. Now it's time to connect VS Code and Blender. To do that, we'll need to install one more extension. Let's open the extension sidebar and search for Blender Python. Look for the Blender development extension created by Jacques Luca and hit the install button. After that's done installing, hit Control Shift P to open VS Code's command palette. Type in Blender and these are all the commands that this extension installed. Select Blender Start. Select the Blender executable you wish to use. I have Blender in my Applications folder, so I'll use it. 
after selecting what blender you want to use, VS Code will start that blender and install some Python modules into Blender's Python. If everything goes well, you should see debug client attached in the debug console and Blender running in the background. I'll remove everything from the scene, go back into VS Code, open the command palette, and select the run script command. When you switch back into Blender, you'll see that our script executed. Now it's time to talk about the game-changing feature I mentioned at the start of the video. The feature is called debugging, and the basic idea is that it allows you to pause the execution of your script and inspect the variables, properties, and see how your script executes step by step. Let's add some code to illustrate this feature. Let me create a new variable for the location of the cube and update the location on the X, Y, and Z. Let's place a breakpoint in the middle of our script. And let's execute the script one more time. You should see how the script has stopped. And on the sidebar, you can see that we have variables available for us to inspect. Now we can step through each line of our script and see how the variables and data changes. Think of it as running a script in slow motion. Make sure to hit the play button when you're done to continue the script execution. Now when we go into Blender, you can see that our script has finished executing and placed the cube in a new position. But that's not all. Let's create an add-on so we can debug it. I'm going to create a new folder and open that in VS Code. I'll create a new dunder init.py file and paste in the code from one of my tutorials where I explain how to create a custom panel. Let's start Blender. You can see that this custom panel is part of Blender already and it's functioning. Now let's put a breakpoint in our custom operator. And as soon as I press the button of our custom operator, I'll go back into VS Code and see that the breakpoint was hit. I can investigate the variables and the parameters here and see what the add-on will do next. Okay, now that you have VS Code set up, make sure to check out this tutorial next so you can start using it right away. Thanks for watching.